Hello everyone. I am Anushri R, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE. Today we are going to study the GSM and TDMA technology, which is a module two in wireless and cellular communication, with the subject of 18 EC81, the subject for eighth semester students. Further continuing into the topic before we start up let us have few introduction points on the gsm system overview the gsm system was first evolved due to a desire by the european countries to develop an pan european system that would allow roaming on an international basis at the time digital technology and microelectronics had advanced sufficiently to allow the development of an entirely digital technology and second generation cellular systems. Whereas the other TDMA digital cellular standards such as North American IS-136 were similar to GSM. This GSM standards was published by the ETSI inclu which includes specifications for the air interface portion of the system as well as the fixed network infrastructure which is used to support the services offered over the wireless network. The GSM standards may be downloaded by using the um, European standards. Whereas in 1982, the frequency bands of 890 to 915 MHz and 935 to 960 megahertz were allocated for a pan-European second generation digital cellular system which is named as GSM 900. This was replaced, this, this, the, this GSM 900 would replace the incompatible first generation systems which were already in existence with the in different countries. The allocation of these frequency bands was GSM normally adopted, which was normally adopted by the European Condition Commission. The ETSI took over development in 18, 1989 and published standards for the first phase of GSM in 1990. The development process continued, resulting in the development of a functional system in 1992. A new frequency band of almost 1800 MHz which was ranging from uh, uh, which, uh, which was ranging worldwide was originally named after the digital cellular system that is DCS 1800. This upbanded version of PCS bands in the United States has been deployed has been deployed now. The implementation of additional GSM services offered under Phase 2 and Phase 2 Plus of GSM has been an ongoing process which continues today under the direction of the ETSI. Out of all this, today the GSM system is far the most popular cellular wireless system in the whole world. By knowing the system, GSM system, overview of an GSM system overview we will move on to the services that is being provided by the GSM, GSM system. When it comes to the GSM services, <coughs> the first generation analog cellular systems were designed basically for the voice services. Data services for fax or circuit switched data transmission using a voice band modem were classified as overlay services which would run on top of the voice service. The second generation GSM cellular system was designed to be an integrated wireless voice as well as data service network <coughs> which offered several other services beyond 
just voice telephone services that is the second generation system offered in addition to the voice service it offered the data services also with this the types of the services that is been offered over the gsm network was classified into two that is nothing but the tele service and the bearer services that is the categories the two types of categories where the gsm network was classified was tele services and the bearer services with this let us move on and look into what is tele service and what is bearer service when we look at this diagram we can find the bearer service as well as the tele services the tele and that is this is going to provide the relationship of tele services and bearer services to what to the gsm system so the tele services provide standard voice communication between the two end users you can observe here the tele services are the one which is going to provide the standard voice communications between the two end users and additional communication between two end users applications according to some standard protocol that is this voice communication is going to happen with respect to some of the i mean uh, uh, between the two end users according to the standard protocol that is been abided next comes the bearer services the bearer services provide the user with the ability to transmit the data between the user networks interfaces that is the bearer services are the one which is going to provide the data between the two networks we can find here we have the gsm network and we have the transmission network where the data is going to get transmitted between the gsm network and the transmission network so the supplementary services or the services that enhance or support a tele services provided by the network that is with these two services we have something called as supplementary services where in which along with the voice and the data communications these supplementary services are going to provide the services which is going to enhance the support of a tele service that is for example that i can give you as a call setup call uh, termination right so these are all some of the supplementary call holding these are all some of the supplementary services that is been provided in exception to this tele services and the bearer services now with the planning of this gsm system development and deployment it is called for the implementation of the system services this is been carried out in two phases now let us have a look at what are all these two phases includes so the two services that is been offered the planning of the gsm system development and the deployment call the implementation of the system services to be carried out in two phases in the first phase the gsm services offered were where where with respect to the phase 1 that is the bearer ser gsm services phase 1 provided gsm tele services as well as the bearer services and the phase 2 was providing the supplementary services along with the phase 1 so if we can observe here so the phase 1 was it was alone provided with i mean phase 1 was providing the gsm tele services and the bearer services whereas phase 2 was providing along with the phase 1 a supplementary services that is what i told you the supplementary services or the call holding call termination talk call termination call origination right so these are all the supplementary services which was provided in phase 2 in addition with the phase 1 
Now coming to phase 2 plus, this focuses on the addition of high speed pay data, packet data services. So these are, these are, I mean, let us have a detailed look by detailed look into the phase 1, phase 2 and phase 2 plus services. Moving on further, for the phase 1 GSM services, we can have a look here. The GSM, the service category is the one which is going to provide the category of services. When we see, first the GSM Teddy services is going to offer, is going to offer the services which are telephony, emergency calls, short message service, video text access and the teletext fax. The additional details about this GSM teleservices are full rate at 13 kbps voice that is kilobytes per second that, and 112 is the GSM wide emergency number where in which the point to point and cell broadcast types are included. Coming to the GSM bearer services, the bearer services are the one we already know it is with respect to the data that is with respect to the network right so the with respect to the network the data was that is the bearer services was at that time it was providing a service of asynchronous data synchronous data and synchronous packet data and rest others are the services that is been provided by the gsm bearer services during phase one gsm service now coming to the details of the, this are 300 to 9600 BPS that is bits per second which includes transparent and non-transparent and it was providing 2400 to 9600 BPS transparent. Now coming to the next service category that is nothing but a supplementary services. We already know supplementary services are the one where in which this is going to provide an additional service with respect to the tele service as well as the bearer service. Now during phase 1 the supplementary services were call forwarding and call barring. Now with respect to this the additional details about this are all calls when the subscriber is not available outgoing calls with specifications. So this is about the phase 1 GSM services. Now moving on further let us look into the phase 2 GSM services. In phase 2 GSM services we can have a look at the phase 2 G uh, GSM services. Here in the GSM tele services it was providing a half rate speech coder enhanced full rate. So the firstly it was provided with the half rate speech coder and then it was enhanced to the full rate coder. We already know what is half rate speech coders and full rate speech encoders right. So this is about the service that is being provided during the GSM tele services and the details about the, it was an optional implementation. Now coming to the supplementary services coming to the supplementary services we can see many supplementary services were taken in I mean were provided during the phase 2 GSM services those are call line identification connected line identification call waiting call hold multi party communications closed user group advice of charge operator determined call barring so these were the few services that is been provided under phase 2 GSM services. Now when it comes to the call line identification, it was with respect to the presentation or restriction of displaying the caller IDs. Now when it comes to the connected line identification, it was presentation or restriction of displaying the caller ID again. When it comes to the call waiting, we already know incoming call during the current conversation that is whenever we are talking the incoming call would be under the waiting condition call hold that is we can put the called party on hold 
that is in a waiting list and we can continue with the another party if there is an emergency so that is what put current call on hold to answer another then we have the multi party communications where up to 5 ongoing that is calls can be included in one conversation now coming to the closed user group that is restriction of certain features from individual subscribers by the operator that is they are going to restrict that is the service is being restricted or the features of some services are being restricted for only few users rest of the users cannot mean they cannot see the um, service that we are going to provide or use right so this is about the phase 2 gsm services now moving on further we have something called as gsm radio frequency carriers in gsm radio frequency carriers for the gsm cellular systems the air interface consists of channels that have a frequency separation of 200 kilohertz for the three most widely used frequency bands devoted to gsm system operation this channel space spacing yields a different total number of carrier frequencies per band the gsm 900 band has 124 carrier frequencies we can have a look here the gsm 900 band is going to have a 124 carrier frequency whereas the gsm 1800 band has 374 carrier frequencies the gsm 1900 band has 299 carrier frequencies now with this carrier frequencies if we observe the total number of channels for each users is that is eight such users can be used that is since each carrier can be shared by up to eight users the total number of channels in the system could be 124 carrier frequency into eight users will provide you 992 channels for the gsm 900 similarly 374 carrier frequency with eight such users will provide you 2992 channels for gsm 1800 similarly 299 into 8 will provide you 2392 channels for gsm 1900 frequencies so these are the channels that is been provided for eight such users now moving further moving on further we have something called as egsm 900 that is extended gsm 900 and railway gsm 900 the frequency bands are located to the five present gsm system implementations or the one which we studied now the channels have absolute radio frequency channel numbers that is arfcns associated with them so that we can observe in the next slide so if we observe here if we observe here we can have a look at the frequency bands that is been deployed I mean, that is shown here we have something called as arfcn where it is called absolute radio frequency channel numbers this is associated with the one i mean this is associated with 1 to 124 and 259 to um, 293 306 to 340 512 to 885 and 512 to 810 for the primary gsm 900 that is p gsm primary gsm 900 then gsm 450 gsm 480 and gsm 1800 and gsm 1900 respectively we can see here 450 480 1900 respectively are going to use the arfcn channels respectively again we have something called as egsm that is extended gsm e stands for extended gsm 450 and rgsm that is called railway gsm 900 have an added added channels of about 975 to 1023 and 955 to 1023 
so these are the gsm frequency bands and their channel numbers now moving on further we have something called as the allocation of the frames so when we look at this slide we have something called as the additional details about the bands within the pcs spectrum allocation which are used by the gsm 1900 system in the united states the weight spans are allocated for use in either major or trading major or basic trading areas that is the mtas and the btas so when we have the look at this when we have a um, uh, here we have something called as mtas and btas So this is the major trading area and this is the basic trading area right so the channel the a b c bands are each of i wide 15 megahertz and d e f are the bands which is each one is having 5 megahertz wide for a particular carrier frequency the channel consists of a single time slot a single time slot that occurs during a TDMA frame of 8 time slots which is shown here 8 time slots each of these time slots represent a physical channel therefore each GSM each GSM TDMA frame represents 8 physical channels now this further beside voice and data traffic there are a host of different system messages and other overhead information which are constantly being transmitted between the base transceiver station and the mobile station. So this is about the GSM overview, its TDMA, I mean uh, TDMA time slot structure, frequency carrier, um, uh, carrier frequencies, introduction. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.